quickest way to summarize everything you just said is spirituality is an inside job. Yes. And that's, I feel like, our opportunity. Uh, so much of humanity and in the history of humanity has been centered around things outside of self because as we've talked about many, many times in different podcast episodes, that it's a great way for us to understand where we fit, right? And we see something outside of us and we, we pull that kind of in and say, okay, from something outside to in, this is where I am and this is how I relate to that thing uh, or people or culture or anything that's outside of self. But now that there is a common ground and as you're saying, love is that common language between all things, then that line of outside to in kind of starts to get blurred. Hey, Heart Leader family, it's Austin. I'm so excited to share that the early registration for the Silence Your Inner Critic Immersive Retreat is now open. It's October 10th through the 14th of 2024. Click the link below, check it out, and can't wait to see you there. It's like, wow, I'm, I'm highly integrated into, into the whole world now, not just a small tribe. You know, and so if if I can see you and you can see me and we're all around the world and we do different things, but we're very much the same in a lot of ways. We have all the same core values and, and principles. You know, I just want to be seen, heard, and gotten. I want to be loved. I want to be uh, passionate. I want to have feel safe. And I want to have the basics in life at a minimum just so that I can uh, move forward and experience life in a way that is unique and, and expressive. You know, these are things that I'd say a vast majority of people in some way, shape, or form desire to experience. So what does spirituality mean in this in modern world then? To me, I feel like, as you're beautifully, beautifully articulating, it starts from within. We have to start from within, regardless of whether that flows into a traditional religion or it's it could be, hey, there's no religion. I just love different aspects of these major faiths and and I want to practice and and kind of pull it all together because I think there are benefits from each one. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's like, hey, I just I just want to focus on love. I feel like if I'm the most loving person I can be, then that really hits a lot of the, you know, checks a lot of the boxes. Great. And if, even if you're a, a scientist uh, or an atheist, and maybe you may or may not believe, maybe maybe it's non-denominational, or you're saying, "Hey, I don't necessarily believe in in a god. I believe in science or uh, the universe." In some ways, I feel like we're all just saying the same things. And and so, if we can start to say, regardless of what's going on outside, when we can pull inside and we can create that concrete aspect of who we are and what we believe in. And we can find that self-truth from within and express that, as you beautifully said, into all things that we do, all things that we are, whether that's through our work, our relationships, uh, you know, our family, our community, uh, the world, the universe, all of it. You know, I think that helps us uh, really create a solid awareness uh, and, a, and a concrete foundation that can't just be wiped out because something new comes in. Exactly. And ultimately, I know from my own trajectory, like I was a little girl and though my na or my family didn't specifically have a belief system, which was beautiful in itself, their belief system was family, mm -hmm. love our family deeply. Mm -hmm. And that is an expression of faith. But I always had this call to... God, if you will, to get closer in some way. So my neighbors were very um, dedicated to church. Mm -hmm. So at a very young age, I was like four or five years old, I would get up every Sunday and go to church with my neighbors. Mm -hmm. Every Wednesday, I would go as well. Like It was just a draw, an innate thing in me. I was drawn to it. But as I got older, that shifted for me. And it didn't mean that I didn't still have the same calling. I did. But how I fed that calling changed. That specific approach wasn't what fed my calling anymore. And when that shifted for me, it was almost as though I was doing something bad or wrong. 
which kind of goes into the whole silence your inner critic, right? Because even my inner critic, it was like, what's wrong with you? But I needed to find what fed me, right? And that goes into this whole modern spirituality too. Should we be shamed if what is feeding us doesn't stay the same from when we're young to when we move through our teen years, our adult years? Everything else shifts for us, right? So many other things shift for us. I definitely don't still wear onesies. Exactly. (laughs) There are lots of things that I don't do anymore that I used to do when I was younger. Now, that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with that belief system. It was beautiful. It still is beautiful. There's so much that I gained from it. And I still return to it Mm -hmm. because there are foundational, fundamental things that still mean everything to me. But I also found expansion by studying other world belief systems and religions. And each time I would find myself being drawn to another one, Vedic philosophy, Buddhism, Taoism, I would immerse myself in each one. And I would gain so much by studying and just diving deep into it. But the one core thing I found through each and every one was love. Love of God or the universe or whatever creation is in that faith, love of self, because self is a reflection of the creation, love of all others, because all others are a reflection of creation and self. And when I kept finding that common language and that common language, it kept expanding me even further and kept expanding my love even further. And that provided me with an opportunity to then say, wow, we really are all speaking the same language. We're just finding different ways to express it. 